let's be real. It's honestly hard enough to pick your entire life up and move to a new place as it is. Not to mention if you're traveling with kids, animals, extra family members, roommates, it just adds to the level of difficulty. Today I'm gonna to share with you six tips to make that as stress-free as possible, or at least minimize your stress. Tip number one, early communication with the realtor that you're wanting to use. It is so important to make this connection first because they're gonna be your best advocate for setting you up for your next steps. It's important to have someone that's going to listen to what you actually need and isn't just gonna take your call and say, yeah, absolutely, I'll help you relocate here. But they don't take the time to get to hear your story and what's bringing you here and what's most important to you along the way. By contacting a realtor first, that's gonna actually help the rest of the tips make way more sense and be way easier which transitions us perfectly into tip number two, which is getting pre-approved with a local lender. I've had a couple of clients that have reached out in the past few years that have people from their home states that they want to use. It's wonderful if they have a relationship that they're trying to support if they just went to the bank and got a mortgage loan, that's not gonna do them a lot of favors locally. Especially in the communities that I'm serving, relationships really matter. And as humans, they do anyway, but something that can make you way more competitive as a buyer is having those local familiar names and faces, like your reputable lender. Same thing with your agent. That no like and trust factor can really give you a competitive edge when it comes to getting your offer chosen over another one all the time. It's actually happened a couple times in the last year and a half where we've been up against multiple offers, but because the agent knew me or knew of me and my local reputation and the community involvement that I have, my client's offer got chosen. It wasn't the highest either. She knew that I would be professional and on the ball to get everyone to the closing table. Unfortunately, we've seen bias. So if, especially if someone's coming from a state like California, if someone's been like brought up here locally, there's almost like a guard. It's not with everyone, but it's, I would say general population where there's almost this guard of like, oh, you're from California? No, it's not fair. It's not the way that should go. But if you also have a California lender, that's going to unfortunately most likely serve against you when it comes to multiple offers and being competitive in an already competitive market. That's why I highly encourage my clients to talk to a local lender that I've already vetted and trusted that has successfully closed many of my clients happily to take best care of you because when my name and their name are on an offer, it's stronger because of our involvement in the community. People know, like, and trust us already, even the other agents, and that does matter. Tip number three is it can be so hard to try to get over here to tour but I highly recommend an in-person face-to-face day of searching. So what that can look like is you come for a short weekend or a couple days consecutively. That is great for the face-to-face -face piece and it also gives you a chance to get a pulse and a vibe from the area that you're considering moving. I talk about it in some of my other videos where Davidson County, which is Nashville, in Sumner County, which is my home county, the culture and the energies of those are two completely different experiences. So if you're leaning more towards one or you're more comfortable in one and the other, those kind of things are gonna matter. You're not gonna be able to see that from pictures and videos. That's gonna be a gut feeling that you instinctively have yourself. Typically with my local clients, I have a five house a day rule for my buyers where if we are going on home tours, we only look at five max in a day. There's a couple reasons for that. One, we would have already done our buyer discovery and consultation, so I know the depths of what you are looking for, needing, and wanting in your home purchase, and that's gonna already drastically reduce and filter out homes that you're gonna disqualify anyway. So that's really beneficial. But also, if we start looking at more than five homes in a day, especially if there's more than one of you with me, what's gonna happen is they're gonna start butting heads about things that don't even matter, and people are gonna get hangry, and there's a higher chance that you're gonna start forgetting which house was which. You might remember a room, but you don't remember which house that that was tied to. The only exception that I make for that rule is when people are relocating here. But what that might look like is we'll go look at some homes, but then we're gonna take a break and we're gonna have lunch or go walk around. 
then we'll go look at a few more just to kind of break it up. And you can trust that I'm gonna be taking notes of your comments every single time. And I have other videos that talk about what that process looks like. Now, that being said, in-person tours are great because we can banter, we can connect, we can have that time together, you can ask questions in real time. That's not always realistic and I understand that. So fortunately, with modern day technology, we can have our meetings that we need to have over Zoom in the beginning, but then also when it comes to looking at home tours, I can FaceTime you happily and give you the home tours. The other important thing to note on that is I only do that for clients that have already been pre-approved with a local lender and have signed a buyer rep agreement disclosing that we've agreed to enter a working relationship and that I have the ability to represent you with your purchase in Middle Tennessee. Tip number four would be on those trips or if you can only come for like a day, I highly recommend doing what I call a preliminary tour. So let's say if you're one of the few people that maybe just, you have no clue what kind of house you want. You're just a blank slate. You're like, I, it could look like anything. I have very minimal expectations. What we could do is a preliminary tour and go and look at a few different types of homes in your pre-approved price range in different areas. And that way you can get an idea and give me feedback on what home types you like, features that you prefer, and the areas that feel most like home to you. Tip number five, use your agent. If you're moving here, lean on me for vetted local vendors. If you are just a pragmatic, analytical, you want to research people that you use like home inspector, things like that, absolutely more power to you. But if it can give you more peace of mind and take one more layer of pressure off of you with your relocation by saying, here are a few people that I trust for whatever service you need, whether it's painting, cleaning, childcare, or like if you need resources when you're relocating, doesn't matter if it's real estate or not, ask your local realtor because they will be able to give you trusted vetted resources for that. And finally, tip number six. I will say this to everyone, whether you are relocating or not. When it comes to real estate, clear communication is everything. If you have any changes along the way, if it is something financially changes, you've got to tell your lender and you've got to let your agent know. If your job changes or there's something going on with your job, you've got to disclose that. If the searching process stops being fun, something's wrong, let us know so we can figure out what we need to do. This is already a stressful enough situation for most people because they only do it a few times in their life. Something that might just be a little sprout of a problem. If you communicate that early, that's gonna be able to be fixed, resolved, cleared up so you can continue moving forward with confidence and clarity as you should. That's all I've got for you today. I hope this was super helpful for you. Stay tuned for the next videos. Let me know in the comments which one of these tips was the most helpful for you. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. And if we're not connected on Instagram already, go ahead and pop on over there. That's where I engage every day. And I would love to talk to you.